Coming up on Around Kern County, we're celebrating the brave men and women keeping our community safe in honor of First Responders Day. And the Board of Supervisors proclaimed November as National Adoption Awareness Month. We're sharing the heartfelt details when Around Kern County starts now. Welcome to this week's Around Kern County. I'm your host, Ali Soper. We're beginning today with a more serious topic, what our county is doing to educate and address the growing fentanyl crisis. Free Narcan is now available at your local Kern County Library. Because our branches serve some of our communities most vulnerable on a daily basis, they've partnered with Behavioral Health and Recovery Services and Drug Free Kern to administer and distribute this life-saving drug. We have a number of resources available. We've recently set up a web page that has uh, upcoming trainings on Narcan that are free to the public. All libraries have uh, naloxone on site. Uh, they've been giving it out uh, at the same time they train people to use it. We've taken a number of steps to do what we can as a, as a system to really help our community to understand the dangers of opioids as well as know what their treatment resources are with our department and our network of providers. Getting educated and using the resources available, um, it's something that we can help our our own family with, our own community, maybe even a stranger, uh, which is what's really powerful. Narcan is a critical tool in the public health response to the opioid epidemic and is used when someone is experiencing an overdose. And it's important to know the signs. Small, constricted pinpoint pupils, falling asleep or losing consciousness, slow, weak or no breathing, choking or gurgling sounds, limp body, cold and or clammy skin or discolored skin, lips and nails. Kern BHRS will also be partnering with Bakersfield Recovery Services to host a free Narcan drive through distribution event on Thursday, November 3rd from 3 to 4 p.m. at 531 Knott Street in Bakersfield. And as Halloween looms, we're sharing important reminders about the dangers of fentanyl and the value of Narcan before the holiday. Kern BHRS and Public Health are working together to educate the community ahead of trick-or-treating. In recent uh, weeks, we've heard from um, national organizations like the CDC and the World Health Organization about uh, rainbow fentanyl, and they're uh, brightly colored. So anytime we see of things that are brightly colored that look like candy, um, immediately we've our concern for the safety of young children. The message that I think both the Behavioral Health Department and the Public Health Department want to send out to the community is that Halloween, it could be safe for folks. Um, we just have to take some precautions that we would take anyway. Here's what they want our residents to know. Don't allow children to eat any candy before it's inspected for signs of tampering. Children should only eat commercially prepared candy and packaged snacks Homemade treats should be discarded out of an abundance of caution. If juice or cider is served to children at Halloween parties, make sure it's pasteurized and do not allow children to accept drinks from unknown people. Please have an adult or an older and responsible person accompany small children trick-or-treating. And again, if you would like free naloxone or Narcan, a life-saving medication that can reverse an overdose from opioids. Please visit kernbhrs.org slash Narcan to find a distribution site near you. Today is First Responders Day, and we're celebrating the brave men and women working to keep our community safe. We are so grateful for our fire department, sheriff's office, probation department, park rangers, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, and dispatch operators who dedicate their lives to saving lives right here in Kern County. There's no more important work than the services that are provided by local government employees, in my opinion. And that is really personified in the work, uh, particularly that is done by our first responders. We want to hire 
people right here from our community to take roles as a sheriff's deputy or a detentions deputy or as a firefighter. We're attempting to put a real effort into making sure that our community understands that you know they can join our team and really make a difference. The Department of Homeland Security says there are 4.6 million career and volunteer first responders across our nation. And if you feel the call to serve our community, there is a place for you within our workforce. Please visit kerncounty.com slash careers to begin your journey today. And as we prepare to kick off a new month, the Board of Supervisors is giving November a special meeting. Anna Marie Odo with our Countywide Communications is here now with the details. November is Kern County's 20th Annual National Adoption Awareness Month. For more than two decades, this campaign has been celebrated across the country with one common goal in mind, to educate people about the thousands of children currently in foster care in need of loving families and permanent homes, especially teens, sibling groups, and children with special needs. I want to thank Christy and Gabriel uh, for their commitment to children through adoption. Uh, this particular year, they're adopting their seventh child, which is really amazing. Our hearts are in it to win it and for these kids. When you see them go from where they're at to where they are, it will keep you thriving every day. The Department of Human Services will be celebrating their annual National Adoption Day on Friday, November 18th, at the Juvenile Justice Center where nearly 40 children will be adopted. Here's a look back on last year's special event. I'm Janice Slagle, spokesperson for the Kern County Department of Human Services and chair of the National Adoption Day Committee in Kern County. At DHS, our core purpose is to care for and enrich the lives of children, families, and individuals in our community. When children come into our care, our first goal is to help families safely reunite. When that isn't possible, adoption is the next best plan for a permanent family for a child. National Adoption Day is so special in family law. We see so much anger and disappointment that as a family law judge, to be able to preside over these types of proceedings joining families together where everyone's happy and just moving forward in their life and you can just see the happiness. It's a great day and it just inspires me to want to continue to do family law. So it is a very special day. You can just feel the happiness. These people go through long periods before they're able to get to this day and um, you can see the joy in their faces. 58 years ago, I was adopted at birth by the Brownlee family in Blythe, California. Probably the most uh, loving, kindest people you can imagine. And I consider myself, uh, without question, uh, the luckiest man uh, there could be because I was raised by that family. And when I'm signing those papers today, I'm hoping that every child will end up with the same type of family that I did. When we do adoptions, it's always happy. Everybody's happy, everybody's smiling, laughing, they're together, the families are there with them celebrating. Um, the biggest challenge for me is not crying. Do you understand you will have the rights and obligations to act in all respects as Ian's parents? Yes. Yes. And do you willingly accept each of these rights, responsibilities, and obligations? Yes. In this court, I've seen the families throughout the proceedings. I've seen the children, I've seen the adoptive parents, and so I feel like I know some of these families and I know some of these children, and so it's especially exciting to be able to get to this point where we are sealing the deal on the forever family. It is hereby declared, adjudged, and ordered that Ian Xavier Cole Smith is declared the child of Matthew Scott Smith and Joyce Marie Smith. Congratulations. I wanted to let you know firsthand that I do know how special adopted families and adopted children are because I too am an adopted child and I was raised my entire life in an adopted family. 53 years ago, I found myself in need of a forever family and Ernest and Ginger Avila answered that call. I don't think that they could have ever dreamed that that baby girl that they adopted 53 years ago 
would be participating in today's National Adoption Day as a Kern County Superior Court judge presiding over adoptions. Today's National Adoption Day is for me life coming full circle. And for the families that will be in my courtroom today, I hope it's a reminder what my parents knew so long ago, that with love, everything is possible. For over 18 years, the Kern County Department of Human Services has played a foundational role in the execution of National Adoption Day. National Adoption Day is the culmination of numerous agencies and individuals working in tandem, and DHS is proud to play this pivotal role. And we're ending today with a big congratulations to our local farmers. It's official, Kern County ranks number one in agricultural production in California for the very first time. Kern County's 2021 crop report tops the charts at more than $8 billion, with the top five commodities being grapes, citrus, pistachios, almonds, and milk. One in five jobs in Kern County is tied to ag, and we are so proud of the hardworking people in this industry who dedicate their lives to feeding the world. Now, it's important to note this gross value does not necessarily relate to increased profits, especially at a time where our ag industry is facing growing restrictions on water, rising costs and labor shortages. Our farmers are truly innovators and we are so thankful for what they do. And that does it for us on this week's Around Kern County. If you have a story you'd like to share, please visit kerncounty.com and fill out our Submit a Story form. We'll see you right back here next week.